you are joining me today in the 1985 Mercury Grand Marquis. I've come 739 kilometers and I've decided I'd give you a road test of it. You've seen it before on my channel, but I'll tell you a bit more history about it before I get into anything about the car, and I'll try to get a real road test of it. So in 1980, Ford came out with a Panther platform. It consisted of three different vehicle models. There was the Grand Marquis, the Crown Victoria, and the Lincoln Town Car. Both the Crown Victoria and the Grand Marquis came off of a larger platform, and they were their own specific models. The Lincoln Town Car, on the other hand, was a model off of a Continental. It was an option and when it came to the Panther platform, it was its own specific model. And the o engine options with the two cars were 302s and 351s. This particular one has the 351, which was a Canada-only option. The purpose of having a 351 in this car was not to make it faster. I mean, sure, by fact, it is faster because it's a bigger engine. But the thing is, it only has 170 horsepower, and that's really not much considering it's a 5,300-pound car. were there. But with 9 to 1 compression and about a 5,000 RPM rev limiter, it makes the car easy to drive. It's light. Everything about it is just simple. When you drive this car, the engine is never working hard. It's always relaxed. I mean, you can put your foot in it and it'll go and it'll make a bit more noise, but it never feels hurried. The car makes itself the most easy and comfortable and relaxing to drive as possible. Oh, I'm still in my lane. Now, some would say that's a forgettable drive, and sure, it's a forgettable drive. I mean, the steering's light, the suspension is very fluffy, and it's just big and comfortable. I mean, you never have to think about it. But it's not forgettable in the way that a Toyota is forgettable. Now, this car isn't necessarily a beautiful car, but it's a very regal car. It's hard to go wrong going anywhere in one of these cars because it's just so indifferent. You could show up at a dinner party and you could show up at a car show. Either way, you're just going to arrive. Now this is different than the Crown Victoria which was used as a taxi cab and kind of has that aura about it. This was not used as a taxi cab, police car, or any of the above. It was a personal car, only sold as. So when you see one of these, you know that the person is either 105, or just has a bit of taste about them. Not only is this car very regal and very comfortable, it's also a very safe car. If you're going to crash, if the mood so suits you, there's going to be five feet of metal between you and whatever you hit. And in the back, if someone happens to be in the mood to rear-end someone, there's got to be four feet of metal between you and the rearmost passenger. If you're alone, there's at least ten feet between you and whatever hits you. I'm going to stop being completely sensible with you guys. This car has one more thing going for it. It's a long wheelbase, V8, rear-wheel drive car. If that doesn't mean it's a good drifter, then I have no idea what would. So when I first heard of the demise of the Panther Platform car, I was very, very sad to hear it, because I truly believe these are awesome cars. And actually, they're kind of iconic. They're the last representation of the American car, the American family car. It's just a big rear-wheel drive sedan. Nothing special about it, but 
you could put a trailer on it and go camping with the kids for the weekend, or you could just drive it to work. See, six people it was, the American family car, from probably the late 50s till at least the late 70s. So when Ford discontinued them in the 2011, I thought, well, we've lost something. Canada, it was a Canadian car. I mean, we love our road trips here. Canada's huge. You have to drive a long way. So when Canada lost the Panta platform car, which we actually built, it was a sad day. Now, it's not true to say that Canada doesn't have a rear wheel drive, body on frame, family car you can buy. There is one left just not from Canada. In fact, it's actually from one of the least expected sources. Hyundai. The Hyundai Genesis 4.6 or 5 liter, I think, is where the town car should have been if Ford put any effort into it. Or the Grand Marquis or any of them. It's a body on frame, rear wheel drive V8 sedan. Sounds a lot like a Panther. It has quite well equipped Woo. that's sheet ice it is quite well equipped it is indifferent to look at but still regal looking has ample power it can get out of its own way and can seat five very comfortably it's a good highway tour has a six speed automatic so it doesn't involve you very much and the steering is loose but not tiring but I think and it's because of the market the market is gone that it's gonna fail it's gonna become one of two things it's gonna become like the charger it's gonna be a police car or it's gonna be a taxi or <laughs> the rental car in fact I've already seen a couple of companies using it as rental cars but I want it to succeed it's a good car, and it is really what I think the best family car is. So, I don't know. I'm sad to see them go. I don't want them to go. I, I'd love the Panther to stay, I'd love the Genesis to work out, and I'd love the Dodge Charger to stop being a stupid rental car, but I don't see it happening. don't. Perfect. It'll drift itself. Ooh. That is a police officer. I don't know if you saw what I just did there, but I almost, there's snow everywhere, and I almost drove off the road. I can't actually see the side of it, and the car started to go down. This is why I filled it up before I left, because I knew if I got stuck, I'd have gas.